Hi everybody and welcome back to the Tecmoto channel and the electronics playlist. Today we're going to be talking about Ohm's law and understanding how electrons flow around a circuit and how that flow of electrons can be controlled by electronic devices and used to make things happen. Now to understand Ohm's law it's important to go back to atomic theory and to do that we need to look at atoms and so we're going to start with this atom here which is the copper atom. Now this might seem relatively complex but it is in fact very simple but we will go through it in a very straightforward way. Now the easiest thing to do is to put a graphic together and so I've done a, a very basic uh, representation of this copper atom. This is the nucleus and in the nucleus we have protons and neutrons. In the copper atom you have 29 protons and those protons are uh, positively charged. Around the outside of that nucleus we have electrons. Two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, 18 in the third shell, and then one loosely connected electron in the outer shell. Now, if there's the same amount of electrons surrounding the nucleus as there are protons, then this atom is electrically neutral. Now, what we can do is we can add another electron to that atom, which makes it electrically negative. There's one more electron than there are protons. Now, if we take both of those electrons out of the outer shell, this atom becomes positively charged because there's more protons than there are electrons. Now, let's put that electron back in and make it into uh, an electrically neutral atom, and let's see how they move between each other. So, we now have two copper atoms next to each other. They are electrically neutral. If we add an electron to the left-hand side atom, that one becomes negatively charged. If we take an electron from the right-hand side atom, that's positively charged, and it draws that electron across to it, again making those atoms electrically neutral. So how does this work in a circuit? Well, let's zoom out again and add another atom in. So we've got three copper atoms. Let's add a 9-volt PP3 battery, with the left-hand side being negative and the right-hand side being positive. We add an electron from the negative side of the battery, which goes into the left-hand side atom. At the same time, one of the electrons is sent back into the positive side of the battery from the right-hand side atom. We now have a positive atom on the right-hand side. This then drags the electron from the middle atom, which leaves that positive, which drags an electron from the left-hand atom, and so on and so forth. We can look at this in a slightly different way. Let's use marbles to represent our electrons, and we take a tube and fill it with our marbles. Now, the tube is open on both sides, and if we add a marble to the left-hand side and give it a little bit of a push, it pushes those marbles along the tube. And so if these were electrons, it works in exactly the same way with electrons passing between atoms. Now once that marble gets pushed out of the right-hand side, that's not going to change, unless we had a battery. And in this analogy, our battery is a bag of marbles on the left-hand side and a box for them to fall into on the right-hand side therefore creating a continuous flow of marbles. We do have to remember though that it is not a single line of atoms going through a piece of material. There are millions of atoms in a piece of material. And of course electron flow can happen across that material. So just as an example of this, I've put three rows of marbles in three tubes. And of course if you push three marbles in there, all three will move at the same time. So current flow doesn't increase in pace but you can have many different electrons moving through the material. Now, if we want to resist some of that current flow, we can put uh, an atom in that tube which does not conduct electricity or an insulator, and that stops the flow of electrons down the bottom tube. If we want to increase the resistance, we can add another insulating atom to the middle tube, and what that does is it stops the electrons from flowing down that tube. However, we still have electrons flowing through the circuit, but just a reduced rate. Importantly, there's a relationship between the voltage, which is what's coming from the battery, the current flow, which is the electrons moving along the circuit, and the resistance. And we're going to go over that now. This is called Ohm's law. And Ohm's law is the relationship between the voltage, the current, and the resistance. The current through a conductor between two points is directly proportional to the voltage across two points. For our calculations, we treat voltage in volts, which is V, resistance is in ohms, which is R, and current is in amperes, which is I. Importantly, there's a very simple calculation we can do to work out the relationship between these, which is V equals I times R. 
which means that if we want to work out the voltage, we can do current in amps multiplied by resistance in ohms. If we want to work out the current in amps, we can do voltage, which is in volts, divided by resistance, which is ohms. And to find the resistance, we can do voltage in volts divided by current, which is amps. To make life easier for us, we can use the magic Ohm's law triangle, which is this. Now this is V over I times R. And if we want to find out any of the values, we just cover one of them up. So if we wanted to find out what voltage was, we could just cover that up with our thumb and it gives us the calculation, which is I times R. If we wanted to find out the current, which is I, we just cover up the I and it shows V over R. And similarly, if we want to find out the resistance, we just cover up the R and it gives us V divided by I. And there we have it, Ohm's Law in six minutes. Um, please do throw me a thumbs up if you like the video. Please do subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future videos, then please leave a comment in the comment section and I'll catch up with you soon.